in this video we will touch base on two important concepts of threading auto reset event and manual reset event in some of the previous videos of threading you know we saw how we can do synchronization by using lock monitor mutex semaphore semaphore slim etc etc now there is one more way by which we can do synchronization and that is by using the signaling methodology now both of these guys that is auto reset event and manual reset event they help us to do synchronization by using the signaling methodology so let's first try to understand what exactly this signaling methodology means let's consider a simple example here let's say we have two threads here thread 1 and thread 2 and we want to implement synchronization you know between these two threads so what we can do here for synchronization is you know thread 2 can probably send a signal out to thread 1 saying that please go under a wait mode okay and then thread 2 can continue doing his work and when thread 2 finishes he can signal again to thread 1 saying that can you start from the place you know where you have halted right so in this way you know by using the signaling methodology you know we can uh, what you call implement uh, synchronization between threads so both of these guys that is auto reset event and manual reset event you know helps us to achieve that so let's first go ahead and see a simple example of auto reset event and then we'll see a simple example of manual reset event and then we'll try to understand the differences between them so let's go ahead first and create a very simple method here called as some method okay we are trying to first demonstrate auto reset event and then we will demonstrate manual reset event let me just make this fonts bigger right and over here what i'll do is i'll just say here console dot right line uh, i'll just say starting and finishing right simple so what we'll do is let's go ahead and invoke this sum method inside a thread so the first thing what you need to ensure is that you have the system dot threading namespace imported in your application which i've already done so i'm going to go here and say new thread and let's pass the method name here saying sum method and i'll say dot start all right so this uh, syntax you know what it will do is it will invoke some method in a different thread right right now when this application runs there are two threads which are created the first thread is nothing but the thread which actually runs your main application or i'll say which actually runs this static void main and the second thread is actually you know which you have recently created in other words which you have explicitly created over here in order to demonstrate auto recent even in a proper manner we'll do the following the static void main will go and invoke this new thread and this new thread will actually go and run the sum method and this sum method currently what it is doing is it is actually just displaying you know starting and then finishing okay so what we'll do is as soon as this thread runs right over here on this line on on after you know the starting is displayed we'll go and make this thread wait now this waiting thread will be will be signaled somewhere from here you know means after the thread has started somewhere in the static void main we'll go and send a signal to start again okay so let's see that how we can use uh, you know auto reset event you know to to accomplish this so the first thing is we have to go and create an object of an auto reset event over here okay so let's go ahead here and create an object so saying static auto reset event obj auto equal to new auto reset event false we'll we'll talk about this false later on right now in order that a thread goes in a wait mode you know what we can do is we can call the wait one method of the auto reset event object so what we can do is the place where we had planned to call the wait right we can say here obj auto dot wait one so as soon as you know the thread comes and execute this line of code right what will happen is it will make the thread to go in a halt mode or it will it will make that thread to go in a hanging mode okay now in order to go and signal you know uh, to the thread and to say that you know restart again what we can do is in the static void main where we are planned to signal to start again we'll call here obj auto dot set 
So as soon as this set is called over here, he will send the signal from this main thread to the some method thread and say that please restart again or please start from the place you know where uh, you are, you have gone in a wait mode. Okay, and what I'll do is you know I'll put a console dot read line over here so that you know we can uh, you know go and invoke the set method after some time so that you know we can see that you know basically how the sum method goes in halt mode and then we can see that after we press enter you know how it is revoked back. So what will happen now? The static void main will run. It will go and invoke this new thread. The new thread will start running. It will display this console dot write line on the console on your monitor, and then it will go in a halt mode. After that, you know, uh, the you know when I go and press enter enter on the static void main thread, it will actually call the set function, which will go and uh, you know revoke this thread again, and he will then go and display finishing. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this application. So I'm going to go and do a control F5 here, right? So there it goes. Now you can see, just for everyone's benefit. So we are at this state now. The static void main ran. It went ahead and invoked this thread. He displayed starting on the screen over here, and he went under a halt mode or in a wait mode. And now we are at this console dot read line. Now, if I go and press enter, what will happen is it will go and send a signal to this wait one, and it will then go and display finishing. So, if I press uh, enter over here, you can see he has now gone ahead and revoked that thread, and it has displayed as finishing. So, in simple words, auto reset event class actually helps you to achieve synchronization by using the signaling methodology. Now, there is one more class called as a manual reset event. And it also does the same thing. It also helps us to achieve synchronization by using signaling. So the question would be now: So what's the difference between auto reset event and the manual reset event? So in order to understand manual reset event in a proper manner, let me go and you know tailor this code a bit, okay? And then we will go ahead with the manual reset event. What I'll do is I'll go and call this wait one two times. So this is one wait one, and I will call this wait one again. So must be I can just number it saying okay this is starting one, this is finishing one, this is starting two, and this is finishing two. So now we have two places you know where the thread can go in a halt mode. Okay, over here this is first, and this one is second. Now I would like to make a statement here. For every wait one called, there should be a set to release it. In other words, for example, at this point when you call wait one, you can see that there is already a set to release it. So this will actually go and release the wait one at one. Okay. Now when this second wait one is called, right, there is no set to release here. So what will happen is you know this thread will go in a hanging mode forever, right? So what we'll do is we'll again go and paste this thing over here, and we'll say that. This will go and release wait one at two. Okay, so for every wait one, we should have a set which actually goes and releases it. So you can see now, if I go and run the application, if I do a control F five here, right? So that's actually the first wait one. So I do enter. You can see now, the first wait one is released. Now there is a second wait one. If I do enter here. Now the second wait one is released. So for every wait one, you know we should have a set, you know, which will actually go and release that wait one. Okay, nice. Now let's talk about manual reset event. Okay. Now again, the syntax of manual reset event is absolutely same. In other words, I can just go and replace this whole thing like manual reset event, new manual reset event. Right. Okay. And uh, you know, even the methods are same. Now the, you can see that we have a set here as well. You know, you can see we have a wait one here as well. So absolutely, you can see I should be able to compile this statement as it is. I compile this change as it is. So you can see that you know, just I went ahead and I changed the auto reset event to manual reset event, and there are no errors. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Okay. Now if I do a control F five, so that is my first wait one running. Now watch very closely here what happens because 
this is the main difference between auto reset event and manual reset event if i press a enter here i just pressed it once you know with one set it actually went ahead and revoked you know all the wait once in simple words when you use auto reset event for every wait one you have to call a set but when you use a manual reset event you know when you say okay this is dot set right it actually just opens a gate and anybody who calls a wait one right you know will not wait actually it will just go and run the thread so in simple words you know if you visualize right auto reset event is like a turnstile gate a turnstile gate is a gate you know where only one person can enter at one moment of time while manual reset event is like an ordinary gate you know when it is open everybody can just rush in okay so in other words the difference between auto reset event and manual reset event is you know in auto reset event you know we need to call set on every wait one while in manual reset event you know one set actually goes and allows all the threads to run okay so i hope that you enjoyed this video in this video we were trying to understand you know what is the use of auto reset event manual reset event and how they differ from each other thank you so much now here's a small favor you can do for us or i'll say it's a small request from us okay uh, if you think that you know whatever we are doing here on this channel is cool it is nice you know it will help out people what you can do is you can go ahead and share this video you know either on your facebook account on your twitter account on your orkut on blogger you know whichever channel you are associated with please do go ahead and talk about this video by doing this small favor you know you are helping us to know that what activity we are doing is it worth for the community or not so go ahead you know if you like this video share it on your facebook account twitter blogger myspace orkut google plus whatever it is you know and let the world know that here's a resource of videos you know which dotnet developers can see and they can learn from it